All right, now, everybody. Quiet, listen to me. We're going to start a show. Now, some of you people have been with me before. You know it's going to be a tough grind. But we're going to have a show. And hello, all. It is a post-Oscar show. Oh, my gosh. The Oscars are done. Yes. Very live, live studio audience. Very live sounding studio audience today. Yeah. And it's great to have everybody here. Tony is here. And I must tell you, I've, um, I can never get enough of Tony. <laughs> but if Tony could get enough of me, I think he would have had enough of Thanks, me. Uh, this weekend, he came to the studio. We're relighting. We're doing some stuff. We have a major piece of hardware that we've added. Now, why am I mentioning this? Um, simply to tell you that we're experimenting with various things that may affect the uh, show down the line, etc. So you'll bear with us. I don't think you're really going to notice anything now because we kind of bailed on everything today because we were having issues before we came on the air. The but I did nice. get a, um, I got a pretty long email, Tony, about audio and stuff. So um, All right. I'd like to watch those audio levels if we can. All right. Apparently the. Um, I don't know. I can read you parts of it, but um, uh, we're going to do our, our best to uh, to watch audio levels and try to bring certain technical specs into, uh, shall we just say, a, a coherent form for the uh, for foreseeable future. So uh, there's that. Kim is here. Kim, She's you? coming off of her the seven shows that she does, and uh, it's really great to have her in our mix also. The Oscars, I... We'll have some comments, but more importantly, Sam Rubin from KTLA in Los Angeles. He is the red carpet backstage insider. He will be here. Kim, uh, rather, Tony looks, Tony looks put upon. Thanks, Tony. He looks, uh, poor guy has, truly, Tony works all the time. Yeah, he does. Talk about it's, jobs. It's wow. just a, yeah. a, a confluence of bad luck all around. It just like everything hit at once. It's one of those things. It, yeah, in, but I... Um, in, in three weeks, I'm going to be... It's going to be nice for me. In yeah. Three weeks. I mean, it's, it's, you 19 are... 19 days, um, 456 hours, I'm going to be free. <laughs> well, I <laughs> uh, am happy that you are part of our world. Albert is on his way to Asia, but he will be here this week to kick off Mark's Madness, which starts on Wednesday. If you haven't picked up a bracket, you should do so. Everything you need to know is in the video that Albert did. We did it together, but Albert did a lot more in the way as the commissioner's responsibilities extend well beyond mine. Uh, he essentially lays out for you everything you need to do, the website, to which you need to go to get your bracket and your entire rundown, your complete list of drops that'll play off against each other. Wednesday begins Mark's Madness, and we're excited about it. So, and uh, there's a reason mm. that this place is fun. There's a reason this place is fun. I think is a drop in Mark's Madness. So. Uh, if you're not familiar with how we play it, you will be, and you don't have to have a bracket to play. The other thing that's happening this week is we have our meetup going down on Thursday. It's uh, 6.30 to 8.30. It is uh, two full hours. We are full. So um, it's a 20-person limit. We're not taking anybody else. We're just doing that so we can visit with everybody. You know, we could keep it open and raise more money for the show. Maybe we should do that. I don't know. We make a lot of decisions on this show that don't make us the most money, but I think are best for the show or for whatever enterprise we're involved in, and this is one of them. So we limit it to 20. Thank you. Everybody should have received, this is why I'm mentioning it, should have received your link. There's a Zoom link that we sent out this weekend, and you should have received it, okay? So if you haven't received it, then you have to hit us at that address, mtsmeetup at gmail. I haven't received it. Uh, also, I would like to note a point of order. The red light is not on. The red light uh, is on only when we are uh, code red. Oh, is that how? Okay. 
Uh, yeah. Yes, this yeah. is. Um, is I um, a, um, do you know? Who I, am? I am. Kind of a big guy. I, maybe Kim, you didn't get the word. Okay. Um, thank you uh, for that. But the um, we're code amber right now. Is that okay. amber, Tony? The uh, no. light uh, code? amber is more yellow. That is purple. Okay, so we are code purple. Then is that what you're telling me, Tony? Thanks, Tony. Yeah. Let's go with that. What, what does okay. that mean? <laughs> Uh, what does that mean, Tony? Code Thanks, Tony. I um I don't have my. Where are my color codes? <laughs> we need yeah we need the. Oh my oh, god! I gotta find I that. Do, the I old cannot get the color, color code. code. Oh, I, gotta find all the time. I, don't, I don't know what the hell they do it for. I cannot get the color codes when we go on the air. It's outrageous. And where are the pictures I was supposed to see? And I also want to know what happened to the pictures I was supposed to see this week. <sighs> I don't know, guys. Somebody make me up a color code and send it, please. Somebody send me a, it's really, anyway, that's what we are. But we will be, I suspect we will be in a code red situation, Kim. So I'm very grateful that you're pointing it out Okay. because I think it will allow people to focus. But right now, this is a pretty, I think code purple is one of our you know, stand down kind of colors. Yeah, we're so, mellow. We're in mellow mode. I had okay. a couple of other things I wanted to read to you some um uh, i've received a lot of positive letters yeah i don't know we get to uh, you can reach us on the show we love hearing from you uh at oh. the mark thompson show at gmail.com mark's madness website and video where can i find it okay kathy uh two kit cat says that and let me tell you the answer it's very simple on our channel the mark thompson show channel there is something there on youtube that says videos so that one says live, one says shorts, one says videos, and so on. Community, etc. But you want the one that says videos. Under videos, look for Mark's Madness 2024. Okay, we did one last year. You know, we've been doing Mark's Madness for years now. So you want Mark's Madness 2024. Oh, look at this. Tony is bringing it up for you. Thanks, Tony. And you can see, of course, it's looking a little more complicated than it needs. There it is. Mark's Madness 2024. Thank you. So when you go to Mark's Madness 2024, you'll see an ad because yeah. YouTube gives you ads, right? But after the ad plays, the entire process is laid out and it's really laid out well. Albert did a nice job with it. So check that out and uh, feel free to, um, to be part of things. And uh, if you, there's the commish laying it out, all of the um, brackets. He tells you the website. He tells you what to do when you get to the website. So I think you'll be happy. And the link but, right there is in the description. See office pool. Yeah, stop. oh, that's you right. The link there, is in the description. The yeah, there, everything you that. need is right there in that description. Yes. Look at that. You guys are so yeah. organized. Yeah, we really take nice Mark's Madness seriously on this show. And if you've never played before, it's fun. You know, you'll hear about these brackets that all the people playing on the NCAA basketball. This is its own world, and I think you'll like it. So, speaking of things I think you'll like, wow, I've got a great show ahead. The Mark Thompson Show. I mentioned the Oscars. I thought there was a lot really great about the Oscars, and we'll talk to Sam Rubin about that. And you may say, Oscars are stupid. Oscars are a bunch of rich Hollywood people getting together and, you know. And you wouldn't be wrong about that. I've talked to you before about the fact that I think it's ridiculous that you compare art. You cannot compare art. I can't say, what did you like more, Michelangelo's David or Leonardo da Vinci's uh, Mona Lisa? How do you compare them? They're totally different. How do you compare, you know, zone of interest to Barbie? Right. It's absurd. But it was designed to raise um, awareness and designed to essentially promote Hollywood. So it started like that, and now it's turned into this thing, and they call it the Academy. Whenever you call something the Academy, it has this sort of sense of grandeur, like it's some mm -hmm. august institution. Anyway, it does do that, though. It raises your awareness of zone of interest, of Barbie, of whatever. Not that Barbie needed more awareness, but you know what I'm saying, Oppenheimer. Anyway, uh, the other thing I would just say about Hollywood, to those who think it's all stupid, is that... In the films that we see, there is a connection to the culture and to what's going on in the world. You know, I grew up at a time when there were a lot of anti-war movies coming on, like 
coming home, I remember, was one of them. There were a lot of Vietnam vets who were dealing with PTSD, the, a lot of Vietnam War stuff, uh, Apocalypse Now, a Deer Hunter. These are films that were informed by real things going on in society, the culture, and the world. That's what and they Hollywood say. can reflect that. That's why they say art imitates life, right? In, there you go. Yeah. I mean, I think it's a a reasonable note that before you just, you know, crumple up and trash everything that Hollywood comes out with, you need to know how it really is a link to the culture. The other thing is it can lead the culture. And I think that's a part of Hollywood that's also been prominent through the years. You know, just awareness, societal awareness. You hope for, I do anyway, that there is a liberalism about gender, about um, about race, about ethnicity. You, you hope for these things. You, I like to see an open world reflected in, or a more open world reflected in filmmaking, because filmmaking does lead the culture. Look, the U.S., and Hollywood, and then I will move on because Sam is going to come and we'll talk about the events last night and what what happened in the show itself. But uh, Hollywood exported American culture to the world. Why do you think everybody wanted to be in America? They had, it wasn't we weren't sending you know reams of postcards out to say hey look at America. They were seeing Hollywood movies. They saw America represented by cinema, and so that's why. Hollywood really did have an impact in exporting our culture. If you want to think of it, the best of America, you may look at it also and go the worst of America. But it was a version of America that was exported to the world. So I, I think people who escan Hollywood and just view everything as garbage that comes out of Hollywood and, oh, it's the whatever, for whatever reason, you can argue it's just, you know, it's too self-referential and too self-reverential. Maybe, but Hollywood is a significant institution. The world of filmmaking is an exciting world. I think it may be one of the most exciting. And now with technology, you can make a movie on your iPhone. Anybody can be a filmmaker. It's really pretty cool. After you make the movie, it's distribution that becomes the challenge, getting your movie seen. But the world of filmmaking is far more accessible than it used to be. Anyway, those are just a few thoughts on uh, Hollywood. The Mark Thompson Show. And all those outfits. I love the outfits. Uh, so I mentioned Sam Rubin to kick off the second hour. Uh, I've got Law and Disorder coming up. I've got a chunk of, uh, no, I've got Bowling with Biden coming up. Oh. Not a chunk of Trump. Maybe I'll throw in the chunk of Trump. Did you get that uh, video I sent you uh, this morning, Tony? Just a little yeah. bit? Yeah, so maybe we'll have a little bit of that. Uh, he is having a love match with Victor Orban. I have a couple of uh, shorts out about that on this channel. You may want to look at those. I think those do in 60 seconds really summarize who Victor Orban is and who Trump could be um, led by an Orban type regime essentially that would establish itself in America. Bottom of the hour is true crime. The true crime corner welcomes Courtney, my other half, and a special guest. This guy is unreal. I can't wait to hear from him. His name is Aiden Gabor. He is a mob informant, but like not mob informant means, you know, in the mob, turned and informed on the mob. This guy was undercover. He was in the mob as an enforcer originally, but then he was undercover for the FBI, I think. That's how it worked. And then uh, at the end of it all, he, you know, uh, finds God uh, in the Baha'i faith. And I mean, I think he's got a whole sort of wild journey. So I really am looking forward to talking to Aiden Gabor is his name. He has a new book. It's called Conflicting Loyalties. But it's and not, his, not his real name. No, it is not his real name. That's and it's right. a faker baker name because he, he turned on the mob. So exactly. he had to come up with a special name. Yeah. No, it is true. Yeah. Um, he is, uh, it's quite the thriller. So, uh, Aiden Gabor will join us in, uh, True Crime Corner. And, uh, I have tomorrow, I believe I have a guest for Stories from the Sky. 
a guy who used to run EasyJet. EasyJet is the Southwest Airlines of Europe. And he was, I think, number three at EasyJet. And so he has got story. And so as, I don't know if you saw, but Boeing is being formally investigated. And of course, they're saying, hey, we can't find any of the documents on uh, what happened with those doors that keep popping. You know, we, yeah, just can't find any of them. Really? Can't find any of those documents. Well, we'll see you in court. We'll see if you can uh, find them uh, after you're subpoenaed. Hey, did so, you see, the, speaking uh, yeah. of planes, did you see the story this morning that two pilots, both young guys, one who had tw twin babies at home, one month old babies, both of them fell asleep at the same time on a two and a half hour flight. And the flight veered off course because they're both napping at oh the same my, time. What? Oh my yes. God. And I, I want to know, is it, is it okay? We should ask him tomorrow. <laughs> is it okay for like one guy to ask the other guy, Hey, can I not off for a few minutes? Is that cool? Yeah. Oh you know. my God. That's seriously. What the f I think that is a seriously what the F. But you're we right. We should both ask of them. him. At the same we time, both him. pilots, they're like, that's it. God, that's crazy. I know. That's crazy. Well, um, yeah, let's ask him. I mean, yeah. I, I, I'm just in my mind, I'm thinking, mm, is there any circumstance under which that would be? You know, my friend used to fly for Lufthansa, mm -hmm. said to me, in the cockpit at Lufthansa, you are not allowed to have any conversation that's not related to the flight. For all those hours? Thank you. That's what I said, for all these hours. And they flew all over the world. And that's why they quit. Not wow. for that reason. They said, I quit because I loved aviation. I loved being a pilot. And it was essentially computer, wire to wire. I didn't do anything. I took the plane off and I land the plane. After that, I don't do anything. And I'm not allowed to talk to the guy next to me unless I'm saying something about the flight. So it's pretty, uh, I, I, that was a revelation to me. That's rigid, yeah. Yeah, that's what kind of you might expect from Lufthansa, oh, but. Uh, not at the, at the Batik Airlines in Indonesia. They're like, yeah, take a nap, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. I got a, um, uh, let me see if I can find this. Um, I thought I've I, received a lot of positive letters. Yeah, I got an email. They hate, this person does, smash it. With, Smashed it mm -mm. with your iron rod. Yeah, Who could hate, hate that? It. Yeah, well, now that I've said it, you're going to find out. You can check the mm. chat. Everybody go, yeah, I hate it too. I hate it. Oh, my God. I wish we didn't uh, have it. And uh, you're going you're gonna to hear a lot of that. Oh. But um, this person really went off on it. Um, but the uh, I also got some good stuff about the Oscars, which I might share in the second hour. Um, and lastly, mm. um, somebody inviting us to see a bit of pupping season with the sea oh, lions. The sea lions, yeah. Yeah. Elephant got a, I've got a sea lion elephant story coming up, actually, along with avian flu, sadly. Um, and... Uh, this person, I disagree with you on a couple of topics, but I really like you. You're well-informed and credible in just about everything you touch on. That's kind of nice. Well, yeah. Um, uh, I, um, <laughs> oh, and somebody else <laughs> doesn't like, th doesn't like this. Chit, chit, chit. Doesn't like chit, chit, chit. Hey, what can I say? Uh, um, they you know say, I want like it. Hmm. Edward Lee. With a $2 super sticker, he says he's got chit, chit, chit versus weed smokers in the final. Chit, chit, chit may go all the way in Mark's Madness. Mm -hmm. um, this is probably pretty shallow, to be honest. If I hear that damn sound, <laughs> chit, 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 ch -ch -chit. I may throw something through the nearest glass window. Oh, no. Please stop using it as a drop. It's just the absolute worst in capital letters. Oh, no. Capital letters is uh, means that she's yelling it. Why are you yelling? Who's that from? Uh, Mary, Mary Beth. Mary Beth, I'm sorry you don't like that. Yeah, really don't like it. To the point um, of throwing things. 
Ray coming in with a five dollar super sticker too. Oh, well, that's a big shout big out shout and out. Uh, another big shout big out. Big shout out. A couple of big shout outs. Um. Anyway, appreciate uh, all your feedback on any number of things and even stories. Shadow producer Calvin Wong sends a bunch of stories, and we do follow up on them. And that's um. Again, the Mark Thompson Show at Gmail dot com. All right, uh, much to do. So, the Mark Thompson Show. I have uh, I've tarried. I have um spend some time talking about things generally. Hope everybody had a good weekend. We're going to Madonna tonight. Oh, yeah. that's fun. It's a, um, yeah. What? I know, I know. Did, did you hear what happened over the weekend with her right now? No, yes, what happened over the weekend? I was just going to ask that. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, what happened? <laughs> so, you want me to, you want me to tell it? You tell oh, it. Go for it. I'll find, let's see if I can find the footage. Okay, you find the picture. So she's, I guess, expects everyone to stand, you know, while she's singing. <laughs> I don't know. I want people to move around. I don't know. Sure. And there's this one person who's seated. And so in the mic, she calls out the person, hey, why aren't you standing up? Well, oh, let me guess. She's in, in a wheelchair. Thank you. The person's oh in a wheelchair. God. What? And so oh she's told, God. this person's in a wheelchair. They're not oh. going to be standing up for you. Oh. And she's like, oh, oh, I understand. I'm sorry. And she's, <laughs> you know, she is embarrassed. They're embarrassed. Everybody's embarrassed. It's just oh, this my God. Incredibly my I'm awkward, sorry. <laughs> right. cringeworthy moment. Oops. Yeah. That is. Would you like to apologize for what you've done? Yes, I'm sure the apology. Uh... Absolutely. Wow, that's pretty great. I mean, great in an in as in, you say a cringy way. Mm. Well, and this is going to be. I and I've I've heard both things. I've heard a horrible show. She comes on late. She blah blah blah. Yeah. blah. But I've also heard great show. Right. I think Madonna. I get it. She it's not 1995 anymore, Madonna. I get it. She's gotten older. That's okay. It's okay to get older. It's okay to have a songbook that is amazing. She informed music in ways that no other artist of our generation uh, or I should say few other artists of our generation have. She she's great. And it may not be I'm not saying everybody has to like Madonna, but you can't right. discount her just cuz she's gotten old. And by the way, I, I challenge any of us to do one of these shows. It goes on a couple of hours. There's moving. Well, but you know, Mark, she lip syncs some. I, I don't care. Yeah. Cordy and I went to Britney Spears in Las Vegas, and we paid a fortune, not even sitting that close to the stage. I remember, but more to the point. But I mention it because, like, you might feel like, well, she better sing every note for how I paid. No, I'm sure she sang some of it and some of it was lip sync couldn't yeah. tell really from from our seats right. but it was great it was yeah. absolutely great and it's sort of i don't care if it's wall to wall lip sync she has to yeah. dance and do all of this other stuff man it's a great show if so i think we're it, always looking to bust people in this culture you know if you've seen taylor swift she also has a track running behind with her own voice and i i saw a clip of her uh, performing recently in, I think it was Indonesia or somewhere, and she har is harmonizing with herself. With her own so, track. Wow, that's so cool. You, It was kind of cool. So you know that there's tracks playing of her. They all do that. Sure. Yeah. No, that's really cool. When you make that point, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. Like it's, yeah. And I think we've kind of, um, oh, is that right? This is kind of cool. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. My husband was uh, a, a dancer. Yeah. On American Bandstand when Madonna was on the show. That's very, very cool. Yeah. Yeah. Love that. Also love the uh, super sticker. I saw a... Um, Mike. In, yeah. How about a big, big shout, shout out. out? Love that, Mike. Mike Ekstrom for 10 bucks for the super sticker. We are crowd founded. Crowd, well, Fun crowd founded and funded. Thank actually. you so much. And thank you so much, Mike. Mm -hmm. Oh, here's the video. Oh, here's the video of Madonna. Take this ride with me. What are you doing sitting down over there? Uh, what are you doing oh sitting down? God. Oh, my God. Oh, okay. Oh. Oh. Incorrect. Oh. Sorry about that. I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you're here. I stand corrected. <laughs> You don't I'm stand corrected. Here. You might be corrected, but you don't stand. See what I did? My oh, man. I'm sorry. sorry. Yeah, that was a tough one. Uh, um, yeah, there you have it. I mean, at least uh, she realized her mistake right away. But still, you have to assume, you know, not everyone's going to be standing sometimes. Shut yeah. your mouth. 
Yeah. Weird. I'm not paying to go to a concert. What does this say? I'm not paying to go to a concert if they're not singing. Well, it, there's a lot. It's not a concert like the old days anymore. Mm-hmm. You know, I should say the old days. You know what I mean? It's a show. <laughs> and part of the show is, um, you know. Back in my day. Yeah, I'm just, uh, really. Um, Madonna didn't have her granny glasses on. Yeah, there's. She- <laughs> <laughs> She's older. I get it. I mean, Listen, what is she in her fifties or is she sixty? She's you she's know. sixty. How old is Madonna? I want to say sixty. How old is she, Tony? You would know that. We just thought about it this morning. Uh, sixty-five, I believe. Sixty-five. Thanks, Tony. Wow. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's great. She's just coming into her. She's just hitting stride at sixty-five. I guess so. All right, Kim's news. Let me tell you what else I just I mentioned the bowling with Biden. I also have news out of the FDA about some promising drugs that we talk to you about. One's related to uh, Alzheimer's, one's related to ALS. And uh, we told you about them when I say, and I do want to say this because you go, oh, there's a promising uh, drug regarding Alzheimer's or ALS. No, you have to know, and we, we reviewed this in great detail once before, but we'll just say now there is delayed release of this drug now. Uh, there is more skepticism being applied to this ALS drug and to the um, the Alzheimer's drug. The Alzheimer's drug, as you know, it was evaluated in this really funky way. And so the promise that we all have for any drug, the hope might be a better way to put it, really has to be backburnered because the hope can't inform the trial testing and trial period of the Alzheimer's drug. And now the FDA is finally, I think they were under a lot of pressure from the pharmaceuticals to green light it. And now they're, and they're, they're delaying, but you can tell that they are, um, they're waffling, but you can also in the delay, see a lot of the pressures that they're under. Anyway, I'll get to that story a little bit later in the show. Smash the like button like a boss. Smash I, um, it with your iron smash rod. Smash with your iron rod. It helps us in the algorithms of YouTube. Kim's News and then uh, True Crime Corner. Mark Thompson Show. The Mark Thompson Show. On the Mark Thompson Show, I'm Kim McAllister, and this report is sponsored by Coachella Valley Coffee. President Biden's 2025 budget proposal calls for cutting the federal deficit partly by raising taxes on the wealthy. The plan released today also includes provision to strengthen Medicare and Social Security, create clean energy jobs, and provide tax credits for first-time homebuyers. The White House says it would lower the deficit by $3 trillion over the next decade. Former President Trump says he thinks a TikTok ban would only empower Facebook, which he called the enemy of the people. Speaking uh, to CNBC this morning, the likely Republican presidential nominee said there's a lot of good and there's a lot of bad with TikTok, but he predicted that banning it could help Meta, which owns Facebook, double in size. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu says he and President Biden don't always get a- agree on key issues. Today, he said they have agreements on er- Israel's basic goals in its war against Hamas. They also, though, have disagreements about how to achieve them. Netanyahu's comments come after President Biden was caught on a hot mic after last week's State of the Union address, saying he told the Israeli uh, leader they'll have to have a come to Jesus meeting. A car went over a cliff and plummeted 200 feet down the hillside in the foothills of the San Gabriel Mountains near Glendora. Happened early this morning. A passenger was able to climb up the hill to flag down some help. Los Angeles County Fire and Rescue freed the driver who was trapped inside the vehicle. A helicopter hoisted the person out of the canyon and delivered them to a hospital. The cause of that crash and the condition of the driver still unknown at this time, like something out of a movie. Americans don't expect to catch a break from high prices anytime soon. A new survey by the New York Federal Reserve shows consumers think inflation rates will be up 3% a year from now. Central bank policymakers, meanwhile, project inflation will actually fall 2.1% by 2025. It's interesting that they're now, just in terms of expectation, there's a sense that things are going to get more expensive. It's a weird psychological thing that's going on with inflation it it doesn't necessarily conform to what the reality is with inflation and that story really reflects that 
Here's a disturbing story. Meat manufacturer Johnsonville is recalling more than 35,000 pounds of meat after multiple reports of black rubber. That's not what you wanted to chew on this morning in your sausage. The Wisconsin-based company recalled its ready-to-eat Polish kielbasa turkey sausage after at least two consumers reported that material. That according to the U.S. Department of Agriculture's Food Safety and Inspection Service. The product was produced from October 30th and 31st. It was shipped to retail distribution centers in several states throughout the country. There's never been anything like this. Well, I am... um... I'm troubled by that, aren't wow. you? I'm not even a meat eater, and I'm troubled by that. Yeah, mm. it's you know, it doesn't seem too appetizing to have black rubber in your sausage. Why is the <laughs> sausage so chewy? Leave, leave the appetizing out. I mean, yeah, I just I, think that it might not be good for you. Keep to, chewing, um, and I just can't. No. Look, no. the black rubber should be listed as a separate item on the menu. That's all I'm saying. Don't put it in the meat. You Thank know, you. I think the meat and black rubber should be a different different items on the menu. Gross. A rock slide in Malibu is closing down part of the Pacific Coast Highway. That's because large rocks and boulders came to rest in the lanes last night, right near Big Rock Drive. Oh, I mean, oh, no, no, no. What? No, Big no, Rock no. Drive is covered in rocks. I mean, what oh, do you want? Oh, it's just too. No, 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 no. It's too perfect. It's too. Two on the nose, as they say in Hollywood. They advertised it. Is anyone really surprised? Geologists gotta... say. <laughs> this is Casey the... Kasem in Hollywood. <laughs> yeah, this is Casey, and I'm wondering why Big Rock is covered with rocks. It's a little too on the nose. Geologists say as the hillsides dry out after being saturated by recent storms, the earth can become unstable, resulting in rock or landslides, especially on Big Rock Road. Yes, <laughs> Big Rock you. Drive. <laughs> thank you, yeah. Joe Geologist, for that one. Right. And I don't know if you saw this. Lastly, a brawl marred the final two minutes of the Women's Southeastern Conference Tournament. Really, ladies? I expect you to act better. Oh, Uh, no. This actually was the brother of LSU, one of the LSU players, who was arrested after jumping onto the court after his sister was called for an intentional foul and then was knocked to the floor by a player for South Carolina. The remainder of the game was played five on five when all other players on both teams were ejected for leaving the bench. I mean, this was a big old brawl. South Carolina went on to beat LSU 79 to 72. Mm. Man. Yeah, that was well, a good one. That was a good fight. That was a good yeah, right. fight There's never court. been anything oh. like this. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody there just needs to relax and take a sip of tea. This report, sponsored by CoachellaValleyCoffee.com. Oh, I see what you did. Very Thank impressive. Thank you. Yeah. Girl, you just woo. Yeah, really good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Get your you Mark really Thompson Coffee Show cup. Right fill on. it up. Get a little something good going in there. Find sure. a huge selection of coffees and amazing teas. It really is a treat just for you. CoachellaValleyCoffee.com, the website. Get your exclusive 10% discount just for being a Mark Thompson Show listener viewer. You can put in Mark T all together at checkout. You can. And enjoy the good stuff. It's pretty great. Yeah. We got to say. We I'm drink Kim, it in our house. Uh, we drink it everywhere over here, too. Mm-hmm. I'm Kim McAllister. This is the Mark Thompson Show. <laughs> They had to close down an entire radio station to silence him. And now, he's here. Ladies and gentlemen, Mark Thompson. Mask it with your iron rod. I come from regular stock. There's a reason that this place is fun. Hey, Mark, it's George Santos here. Don't ever use that word. What are the porn stars doing, Mark? That's pure speculation. They pay me a lot of money for having attitude. That was very inappropriate. What you say is the political dogma that they're trying to shove down our throats. Straight up, right in, no problem. What the hell is going on in the United States of America? Cuatro años más. I don't wear a mask for the same reason I don't wear underwear. Things gotta breathe. Say what?
Do you have a secret talent? You get nothing! That's not fake. That's real. Y'all can all go to hell and I'm going back to Texas. Out of time. Bye-bye. Did you really just do that? What up? What up, everybody? It's our big Monday Oscar hangover. Courtney and I went to a Oscar, a uh, an Oscar uh, home uh, where there were, I think there were some Oscar nominated people there. I mean, from past Oscars, but it was just the right vibe. Like it wasn't too intense, but it was just to interest in other filmmakers there and stuff. It was, didn't you like it, Courtney? I thought it was pretty cool last night. Yeah, I liked it. I, I thought it was a lot of fun. Yeah. I liked the, that you could, uh, they incorporated betting on the Oscars. Well, we, we had an Oscar. Cool. <laughs> Thanks for of... making me sound like I only go to parties where there's a bunch of degenerates <laughs> gambling on things. Everybody filled out a ballot. You put in $20, and yeah. then, you know, that's how it worked. But um, I, no, I thought it was great. I yeah. had a lot of fun. Do we have Aiden ready to go? Because I don't, uh, I can't see with the new configuration here. This is quite a configuration. Yeah, okay. Uh, it's a pretty uh, <laughs> complex configuration, oddly. Of course, the host of the show has uh, less than ever uh, in terms of what I can see. But um, I want to quickly, before I go any further, can we? Can you put Tom Gunn? My favorite gun is a Tom Gunn, as you know. And he is a someone who... Gave us a ten dollars super sticker. Big shout, Big shout out to wow. Tom Gunn. What yeah. up, Tom? Big shout out. Yeah, that's really really cool. Tom Gunn, G U N N. I'd like to thank you so so much. Thank you so so Acknowledge much. Thank you formally. <laughs> uh, thank you, Tom. Thanks everybody. We're a crowdfunded show, so it really meant Mary Baca. What up, Mary? Big shout wow. out. Big shout out with a super sticker for Mary too. Really does help. I mean, sadly, we have to try to shake the trees for support because. That's the only way we stay on the air. But you guys have been really supportive. Patreon and PayPal, the ways to join the community that supports our show on an ongoing basis. Now, on Mondays, we do it at this time. It's True Crime Corner. Let's pay a visit to Mark's True Crime Corner. This is not a good neighborhood. I'm scared. Now, here's your host, Mark Thompson. He's a former mafia insider. He wrote a book, which is called Conflicting Loyalties, and he has a story to tell. How about it for Aiden Gabor, everybody? My life as a mob enforcer turned DOJ informant. Aiden hey, Gabor. How you doing? Nice to, yeah, thank you. Wow. This is uh, the real thing. He's got to disguise his voice, and we're very <laughs> honored to have you with us, Courtney. Yeah, um, this is very exciting. Yeah. Courtney is our regular and has an abiding interest in true crime, regular reporter for and on true crime. But your story is mm -hmm. is about crime and about a connection with law enforcement. You started very young in your relationship with the mob, didn't you? Yeah, I, I it, it started out where we, my father worked or was an associate with them, and we used to have parties together, like you know, gatherings where you'd have dinner and everything. As the young one, I used to get in those scuffles. I was always the youngest, but I was big, and I never, I got into a lot of scuffles, and I'd come in and I'd be, I'd actually win a lot of the fights, and I took took my lumps, and it got to the point where. I guess you can call my mentor, and he's like, uh, hey, can you do me a favor? Just drop this package off. It just started me just taking things places, picking up things, bringing them back. I was like 11, I mean, 10, 11, right around there, going out there, doing things. And then eventually I worked my way up to uh, when I was 16, I was uh, like, uh, I was enforcing with them, uh, collecting. The... Goodfellas window that we got on, you know, that the Henry Hill story suggested that looking at the mob, Henry Hill wanted to be part of the mob. When you were just doing the errands that you described, you know, you kind of eased into it and before you know it, you were there. Did you think, hey, I want to be with these guys? They seem to run everything or, or did it just kind of happen seamlessly and you didn't even realize it? 
I didn't even realize that. Honestly, I just they were just friends, you know, it's friends of my my father and stuff. And it just rollerballed, I guess, into one thing after another. I, I got into scalpels. I'd laugh when people were getting hurt. And they're like, there's something about this guy. You know, this kid's got some um, issues or he I kind of like him. But I, I gave respect and I, I didn't take a lot of crap from too much. He gave me respect. I gave me respect back. And that's where I learned as you very young age respect was everything and there's a couple times i learned the hard way when i first started respect got myself knocked around for opening my mouth and getting into disagreements with the other guys in the crew did you end up doing any time ever with the mob no no i was never never anything with them i um and what happened was towards the end of it all uh eddie the the FBI was coming down on him and stuff. And he's like, you know, I had a chance to go to school. I said, go to school. I'm leaving. We're, you know, you need to figure something else out. Um, just just go, you know, make yourself better, you know, and just get away from this. See what's happened to all of us. We're all going to have something. That's and an extraordinary story, right, uh, Aiden Gabor? In other words, most of the time, it's like the problem with the mob is you can never leave the mob. You know, in this case, they said, hey, you need to go find something else to do? Yeah, pretty much, because the crew basically disbanded, I guess you say. It was the FBI came and just started arresting everybody. And um, I never really got inkling, really anything, until they showed up at school. And I got this, like, hey, you know, this is what we have on you. We got this on your family. We got this. We, we want you to do something. And they told me they wanted me to. The area I came from had a lot of law enforcement and politicians that were uh i guess you could say getting money or you know from everybody and they wanted somebody that they figured they could trust to get in and just get information on so there were dirty politicians and dirty public officials and they were looking for you to get that information yeah, they kind of said, you know, we need to do a couple things. You know, they're, we're going to look at, you know, anything to do. The first one asked me to go to the department, get on. You know, first of all, they said, you know, get yourself out of school. Party yourself out of school. Like, you just kind of, you couldn't do it. And, yeah, I did. I <laughs> myself, I pissed my dad off pretty good. But, um, it, you know, um, I went the first place. And the guy was, I, I met him one time before, but he's a guy that wanted to be, I guess part of the machine and he was a cog and he wanted to show like he was doing hits as an officer. And after several months, I, I kind of talked, he re realized who I was and he kind of started talking to me, kind of hit it off. And then he started getting, just talking all about the shit he did. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Anything Courtney? No, I mean, I was, I was reading and listening to conversations that Aiden had had about this, and it's it's absolutely incredible. Yeah, I mean, when you don't even have to pull it out of somebody. It's oh, I know. Yeah, when this this person is moonlighting as a hitman, it's it's a I, cop. He's a cop. <laughs> he's moonlighting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he wanted to talk about it. He, he, you could tell he wanted, but he wanted somebody that you know. He, he said, "You, you, you run with the guys. You know those are guys I talk to." I go, "Okay, <laughs> yeah, you know." And he's like, well, "What are you doing this for?" I go, "I got, I got my things going on. I got you know stuff I'm doing. I mean, I don't really give a shit what you're doing, but um, that's about it." I decided to do this, and he, he, he was a drinker. And I didn't realize with all the time thing I started getting like that. And um, yeah, he just basically up. His wife was one that really opened up. She didn't want to have anything to do with it anymore. I think it was really eating away at her because he told her everything. And that's what I told him, pump her for the information. And uh, they did. I mean, that's all got out. She, and she basically turned on him. Prosecutions followed and your relationship with the cops continued. Uh, tell me about you had kind of an awakening and you sort of um your arc of work with the mafia ran its course and you your life also became sort of transformed 
Yeah, I mean, I started what, what it is is when I went to, they wanted me to go to another department. Maybe this was just, I don't know, this was just to see what's going on. It happened to be where I grew up. And the people are talking about, yeah, I saw that we, they had money. I used to see them hanging around at the shop and doing things. And um, I talked to them and they're like, yeah, you know, they showed me their badges. And I just kind of, well, I was a kid. And then um, when I got in there, you know, I talked to, to get in there I said you're going to follow you're going to follow the line you told the line yes sir you know and yeah i got in there and started seeing you know i did that but then after a while i realized these guys these guys are supposed to be protecting people man they're not doing anything right they're pretty much like worse than we were because they were dealing with the gangs and the drugs and the shit like that and when when I was under, you're saying that. But, but let me just be clear about what you're saying. You're saying they're they're shaking down some of these same gangs and drug runners that you guys used to deal with. These this is law enforcement you're talking about. Yeah, you know we didn't deal with that. Our thing was we we stay away from the drug. We were told we don't do drugs. We do other things. We did the, the numbers, the car. Let the gangs deal with their. I'm not going to say the word exactly used. But right. you should let the gangs deal with their neighborhoods. That's let right. them do the drugs and we'll, we'll get money off it. But we're not gonna we're not gonna sell it. We're not gonna really, you know, sure we keep it out of our neighborhoods. Is the kind of how the way they were put it, keeping it out of the areas that we kind of run. And these guys are actually with the gangs, like working with the gangs, getting money from the gangs, giving them information. They take down another gang, keep half the O, and give it back to them. Um, yeah, I mean, nothing in the neighborhood where I grew up, that's nothing new. I mean, that was like, okay, that's old news. You know, they just want somebody that would be in there just to get information of who was doing it. And uh, I, I had conflicting, I started doing it after a while. You know, when you get a law enforcement, I don't know if you know, there's a thing called a blue line. And when you get in there, you protect your brothers. Just like when I was with the crew, we protected each other. We may have had a little discussion the little things against each other you know we may have disagreements but we still stuck there as a family it's almost in law enforcement we get that too and you feel bad so i was drinking and i started getting really bad drinking i was realizing what these guys were doing taking these guys down and i got to the point that i would see like hallucinations of like the flaming sword coming at me with you know saint michael and all that and i would take a three to seven I probably did it several hundred times and spin, put it, put a uh, magnum round in there and spin it and pull the trigger and put it in my mouth. Wow. Wow. Never went, I know God was watching and never went off. And I got to where I was stupors or I would just get out drinking. And um, eventually, you know, my buddy Don, he, he got me out of it, you know, got me breaking up a little bit more. And um, after everything was going down, and, uh, yeah, it was tough for a while, but then I realized I was doing something good. These guys were not good guys. So, I mean, so, I guess you could say you get a rat and throw it with the rest of the rats is basically, I think, how they look, looked at it. Well, rat or not, I mean, uh, it seems what's interesting to me about your story is that it seems as though, you know, neither side can pass the purity test. And it seems <laughs> as though they're, they're both kind of rolling around in the mud. I mean, you know, um, I'm sure law enforcement would say, yeah, well, you know, that's where everything goes down, in the mud. So if you're not ready to get muddy, then, you know, you don't want to be in law enforcement. What you're saying is that what you witnessed was sort of corruption on the part of not only those you were going after, but many of the people who were going after them, if I understand you right. Yeah, you know, it, it, it takes one dirty or bad police officer to make 10,000 look bad. All the good ones, you got that one. And, you know, everybody they got blinders on. They don't have blinders. They just don't want to know. And, they, you know, somebody, they put somebody in there for it. And that's what the blue line, you know, trying to stand together. But it makes it all look bad. Sure. And then, um, you know, yeah, you, you're taking it all down. You're, you're, you're doing it with, with the bad guys. But um, like I put in the book, uh, I've changed the names, places, and everything to protect the guilty. Because there's nobody innocent. We're all guilty. They we were all. I was not innocent. I did a lot of bad things, and but when I was really in there doing this, I realized maybe I could do something good here. And uh, when these guys were getting pinched and taken down, I felt good, but I still felt 
No, I wasn't whole inside. I felt, I can't even describe the feeling I had. I mean, I, I still vividly see Phil putting that gun to my head and just pulling the trigger. Putting, I mean, just and doing that's all a, the stupid that's things. A, that's a brutal, brutal place that, that leads you to that. Tell me uh, quickly in our last couple of minutes, there was a religious redemption in your case, right? Yes, sir. I, I was sitting there, a friend of mine, Sam, he came up and he said, you know what? My, I mean, my buddy, Don, was very religious Catholic. And I grew up Catholic. And he he was like, you got to look at God. There's something out there. Spiritually, you need something. And my wife, Spring, and now she was just saying the same thing where my buddy Sam came. And I mean, I'm, I, I used to go to confessionals. And I go in there with the priest, and he's like, "What did you, you know? You did something." I go, "No, I didn't see a thing. I didn't do a fucking thing." He's like, "No, no, no." And you said, "I go, no, I didn't see nothing. Nothing's going on." And he's like, "Get the fuck out of here." I mean, I'm sorry, but that's what he said. Get get out. Just leave. You know, throw me out of the confessional because I wasn't going to answer anything. And then when I was young, and I never really was religious, and then I started reading on the Baha'i faith. And my buddy Sam showed me why the it. why the Baha'i faith because the the mafia you associate at least this particular uh, version, um, as you say, it's in, in church all the time with uh, generally mainstream Catholicism. I think oftentimes that informs those uh, Italian communities in terms of their religi religiosity. How did you get to the Baha'is? I, you know what? I was never very religious. I was always joked I worked for the other guy. And, and <laughs> they never really they never you know I recruit for them. That's what my joke was. That's all. I was anti-religious, and I just started reading. And you know, when you, I found out I had ALS, so I'm like looking, and I'm like, okay, I need some. So I started reading it. It, it, it just it dawned on me because in the Baha'i faith, men and women are equal. I've always, you know, I grew up as a mama's boy. I don't know what guy out there is not that will say they weren't the mama's boy. I was, and so my mom ran the house. My dad did the yes ma'am, no ma'am to her, and. And they, 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 everybody's equal, I and mean, then everybody's equal. And I'm thinking, you know, you know, you're right. We're all equal. We all bleed red. I hope so. And we just need to to get to get along, to get together, and make it make the world better. I figure I I can make the world better, but I really something inside of me just like wow, oh, I, I I I I relate to this. I, I this is awesome. And more I read on. on I'll do Baha'i, I, I just, you know, it's the youngest religion, and, but it's, he's, it's out there with all the side. We believe in God. Everybody believes in the same God. It's just, we look at it differently. And there's all there's messiahs from all over. And I've, and I've been reading it. I do classes a couple nights a week. We watch it. And I still, my wife's Catholic. She worked with me through these classes together. And she did it. You know, she wasn't going to convert. And uh, she's still Catholic, and um, or Protestant, but we still, we still, we still do do everything together. But but it just gave me an aha moment, just reading and realizing this is something I need. You met your wife um, after the aha moment, or did you meet her during your time with the mob, or when did you meet your wife? Oh, I met my wife. Everything was kind of over with. Everything was going yeah. down. I was done with everything. So she met you post post criminal life. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it, That's you know, when Courtney met me. Yeah, post criminal. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, my, yeah, well, when yeah. I met, I, I, we had a swear jar because I I did swear a lot. I mean, every other word started with an F or something. And so my first month with her, I eight hundred dollars in that swear jar. <laughs> and nowadays I'm keeping it close to 100 and 150 a, a week. You know, every time I'm a little better at it, but it, 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 she's a, she, she, she's you got to have that support. She supported me through everything, and you know she knows some of the things I did. She supported me. She's like, you know, that's that's back. You know, let's let's look forward. Sure, sure, you know, sure. You can make yourself better. You can make everything better. And once you one day. You'll 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 pay for what happens, but right now let's just make make everything better. Aiden Gabor, conflicting loyalties. My life is a mob enforcer turned DOJ informant. There is the book. Uh, Aiden, and of course, Aiden Gabor is a pseudonym. How did you come up with the pseudonym Aiden Gabor? <laughs> it's actually a pretty good story, I think. I, I, I <laughs> <laughs> we just we, we just like we're trying to figure out what what what, what to do and. and 
you know, my mom looked like Ava Gabor, and I'm thinking, all right, let's do something like that. And that that's kind of how we, we worked on it. That's how that came out. Yeah, I, I love that. It, it's like wow, it's like yeah. Ava Gabor, Aiden Gabor. His mom looked like, uh, you know, not bad. the Gabors. Yeah. Uh, and my very last question. Joe Box and Little Anthony. We have a drop on our show, Joe Box and Little Anthony. It's when they were booking a bunch of these mobsters in New Jersey or New York, I Joe think. Joe Fish, Sal the Shoemaker, yes. Joe Box <laughs> and Little Anthony. Uh, so, these are, so we use that drop a lot, Aiden. And... Um, I, my question is, do those mob nicknames exist Joe like Box that? Joe I mean, and Little Anthony. Yeah, do you have those? Like, you'll when you go in there, it's like, yeah, that's Joe Box. Go talk to Joe Box about that. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I had a couple of them, but more, I, the one that stuck was they called me Sandwich, and I hated that name. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah, but so, so the nicknames do exist, though, even though you didn't like yours. Yeah, everybody had a little something, you know. We had one guy, and we called Nikki, and I always thought, why would we? Why is Nikki? I mean, he, you know, okay. And, and they're like, well, Silent Night, Nick Gills, and you don't want to, you don't really want to talk to him. He oh, to I see, him. Silent Night. Oh, yeah. that's wow, wow, wow. wow. That was an explanation to me, and I'm, it took a while when I was younger to figure out what that meant. Yeah, and he, he's the. He, Nick's the one that taught me, hey, always carry an ice pick. This is how you do it. You learn. He taught me the things. And I'm just, wow. To this day, I'm thinking, why does this guy do this? But yeah, he, he pulled me aside and said, here, kid, this is what you do. And to this day, the ice pick he gave me, I still have. I still carry. I wow. Carry. Wow. Here, My parents told me to carry pick. cash. Go. <laughs> go. <laughs> He's got an ice pick. Courtney's got cash. Right. Um, I have a passport. Right, so we all carry different <laughs> stuff. Hey, uh, good luck with the book. It's really exciting. Will you put it up there again, please? There it is. Conflicting loyalties. My life as a mob enforcer turned DOJ informant. What a life you've had. I hope it continues in all the ways you want it to. Thanks for being part of things. Aiden Gabor. Thank you so much, Mark. I love being on. It was an honor to be on with you, sir. Oh, thank you, pal. Aiden Gabor, everybody. That's True Crime Corner for today. True Crime Corner, only on the Mark Thompson Show. Courtney? Yeah, yeah, uh, I was signaling you. <laughs> honest to goodness mobster. I know, that was that was incredible. I like the name Sandwich. I do too. I, I like he didn't that. like it though. Yeah, it really begs how he got that nickname. But um, that yeah, was I really Yeah, I figured it was something related to, I, who knows. Related to sandwiches? <laughs> yeah, related to size or sandwiches. So you guys have a, a mob story, right? Oh, that's right. We do. Because I'm on the phone with you last night telling you, reminding you, we have Aiden Gabor coming up today. And you guys say, oh, we have a mob story, too. And it's oh, really cool. That's so right. I didn't hear the whole thing. So I kind of want to make sure you. Yeah, um, we do. Um, it was um, Frank Collado. Yes. Frank Collado. <laughs> so I met Frank Collado. From a KGO, we come from a big talk radio station, for those who are new, called KGO Radio in San Francisco. And there was a friend I had for a long time who reconnected me with me uh, when he heard me on KGO. And he said, uh, would you like, at that time I had a podcast called The Edge with Mark Thompson. It's still up, but I don't do any, I haven't done any episodes in like six years or something like that. Yeah. Uh, we had really good guests. And he said, do you want to? meet this mobster he's in town in las vegas he was the mob consultant on casino oh. he sat next to scorsese through the entire shoot of casino yes and he has stories about de niro scorsese etc but he, more than anything he was trying to because he was in that crew yeah. that they featured in casino isn't that right yes Courtney? he was yeah. yeah so go ahead i didn't mean to no 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 you're so you're pretty good at this. So we, <laughs> I, I talked to him and then he said, do you want to come out and you and Courtney can take the mob tour with me? He gave a mob tour in Las Vegas. You can oh, Google it wow. and find it. It's really was like a great tour. I used to, to recommend to people that they take this tour Google and it. I don't recommend it anymore because he died of COVID. Oh God. But, yeah. but that said he was unreal. There he is on the left consulting Joe Pesci on the set of Casino. Mm -hmm. So Frank Collada, he was a guy out of Chicago. He came to Las Vegas and he did all this stuff and it's all in Casino. And at one point, do you remember Courtney? I said, 
Well, because he's so like personable. Yeah. I said, well, you never killed anybody though, did you? He said, oh yeah, I killed guys. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and he said, yeah, one guy, I, one guy shot him, shot him three times in the head. And he's bleeding all over the house. He's running around like yeah. a, like a crazy man. I said, "We're running around like around. a crazy man." You just shot him in the head. In the head. Three and then times. I said, "How do you shoot somebody in the head, Frank, and not have them die?" I mean, I'm surprised that he's still running around. He said, "Oh yeah, what we used to do is we used to uh, saw off the uh, the bullets so they're they're cut off a little bit. So you only see it because it made yeah. less noise, less of a bang. Exactly. So we cut them off, and and for that reason, it doesn't go in as far. It's like wow, okay." <laughs> That's um, a lot. He, he was, was he yeah. was a character. Oh, he was. And he, you were recording the whole thing. Oh, yeah, and I I'm, thought we were going to end up buried in the desert. Yeah, so I'm going to this out. last thing because I want to get to <laughs> Sam Rubin. But um, the yeah. uh, uh, last thing is, so when we took the mob tour, I thought, this is really great. I want to record this both for posterity <laughs> and maybe I'll use it on the show in some way. Uh, sure. Of course, with his approval. But I didn't seek his approval for the recording ahead of time. Now, we're in Nevada, Las Vegas. I'm sure that's not illegal, but it might be illegal in other states. <laughs> anyway, point is, at the end of the tour... He looks down and he sees my phone recording. <laughs> oh God! And yeah. I had I had stepped out of the car. I think yeah, to get more money me. or something. It was only Courtney and Frank in the car. And what did he do? He was like, "Are you recording this?" <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to put it under my leg. No, no, no. <laughs> no nothing here. There's nothing here. <laughs> it was it was an awkward yeah. moment. Did but, he ask uh, you to delete it, or how did that play out? No, no I don't he think he was did. cool with it. He was yeah. cool with it. It was but, all right. Mm. It we was, gave him a bunch of money. He, yeah. he, I think the tour was like 400 bucks, and I gave him another 100 It was really yeah. interesting. 150 whatever. A he lot was of, happy. Yeah, but it yeah. was a very interesting It was really tour. cool, actually, it was, and interesting. And he was a very nice person. Uh, Courtney, I'd love to talk to you, but <laughs> I have a bigger name online, too. shooting people in the head thing. All right. Exactly. <laughs> um, uh, but, exactly. Um, but I do want to tease that we're talking about the octopus murders next week. Speaking of organized crime and yeah. the Department of Justice, and so if you have not seen it and you want to see it and participate with us next week. I yes, do watch that. that. You'll like it. The Octopus Murders. I think it is that what they're called? The Octopus Murders on it's called Net uh yeah, The Octopus Murders. It's on Netflix. It's a four-part it's more, series. But but I, I hate that title in a way because it makes it sound like it's all about me. You know me. I don't like a lot of murder stuff, but uh or uh, but, but this is an insanely fabulous series. It's only four parts and it involves the US government, Ronald Reagan, I mean, Iran Contra, so much. It's yeah, great. It's Check it out on Netflix, The Octopus Murders. Courtney, thank you. Appreciate thank you, you being here. Thank you for having me. All right. Yes. Courtney, everybody, yeah. Feel it in your soul. Mm. The Mark Thompson Show. Oh, that's very nice. All right. The Mark Thompson Show. Well, is it is it okay with you, uh, Kim? I'd like to get right to Hollywood if I could. Oh, yeah. Let's go right to okay. Sam Rubin. Yeah. Uh, He's, Sam, he looks a little sleepy, so we have to lie him up. Oh, my God. Up, this I guy, think. I don't know how he does. There are two people whose schedules, energy, and focus I can't conceive of. One of them hosted the Oscars last night, Jimmy Kimmel, and the other joins us now, Sam Rubin from KTLA. <laughs> Sammy, you're the best, pal. Thank uh, you. To, to uh, remove the double chin, but my... <laughs> Oh, I, this morning was like, our morning show is four hours long in KCLA. She's like, they never should let you on that last hour. I could tell you it hit the wall. But anyway, uh, happy to be here. Oh, uh, no, yeah, yeah. Well, I don't, uh, I, I'm astounded by uh, how great you are. And I'm not going to lavish you with any more praise now. I want to pivot. But, in, but you know, you've got such a fan in me. I think your work is just really top drawer. Now, uh, tell me what what uh, reaction was to the Oscars last night. I really liked it. And I, you know. I, I think the reaction was because I'm reading something that's interesting to me because I thought towards the end when Jimmy Kimmel read that review from former President Trump, I thought that was a comedy bit. I thought it was completely made up only to discover it wasn't made up. It was an actual, actual tweet that Trump had posted on Truth Social. And apparently uh, Jimmy Kimmel telling some people backstage that when told, hey, you have some extra time, you know, there's time to fill uh, a TV phrase, uh, Mark, that you know, the show is light, which is never the case with the Oscars. And it came as a surprise to me. He's like, I'm going to read this tweet and that some people told him not to do it, but he did. And then that fantastic uh, end line, the capper line, you know, isn't it a little past your bedtime? And what Kimmel said was, no, isn't it a little past your jail time? Which yeah. was fantastic. <laughs> Uh, very funny thing, but I think Jimmy will be invited back 
for year five if he's so inclined. And uh, it reminds me of another era. How many years did Billy Crystal do it? Um, so I yeah. think we're encroaching. Right. He feels Crystal. like this generation's Billy Crystal. Right. And so. uh, Alan says, show is uh, well thought out. Twins, Arnold and Danny, great entertainment with original Batman, Michael Keaton in audience. That was a great beat in the entire Michael, thing. Michael Keaton, post-70, looking great. Um, this was a more mature Oscars. Uh, but you know what? People looked fantastic. And then that original idea to have five former Oscar winners make these presentations. When I saw the first one, uh, Best Supporting Actress, I thought, gee, this is nice. It is heartfelt. It is going to take forever. And so I thought there's no way they could do this uh, ceremony in three and a half hours. And then amazingly, even with some big production numbers, they did do it in three and a half hours. Uh, and I had exactly the same thought you did. In fact, I think I tweeted it, which is, right. I love this, uh, but it's going to take, you know, it's going to take okay. it tomorrow if yeah. everybody comes on, you know. Right. Um, Alan Rossi just pointing again uh, with his comment that uh, Kimmel was right out of the shoot with the ad libbing. Thank you for the partial standing ovation, which is exactly right. He got a partial standing ovation yeah. in the hall. But Kimmel is so loose. He makes it look easy. But wow, there's a lot of pressure. That's a very well, tough room. Well, and yet well, the room. Well, 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 yeah, go he's ahead. Much, he's, and he's, he'll be the first to tell you this. He is much improved. When you consider when the, the late night talk show came out and was on these, uh, what I think Conan was on weekly cycles, but Jimmy was on 13 week cycles. The, the show is a billion times better now. And, you know, one person I've spent a lot of time with off camera, Guillermo is the nicest guy alive. Yeah. And I thought that even that toast thing, the, the sponsored drink, essentially, and I work several award shows and you're always trying to look for these clever integrations. I thought that was the best integration I had ever seen. I agree. Because, uh, and, and I thought, this, I kept waiting for it to get awkward, and it never did. It, it only got funnier. Did. And I thought they plugged the tequila. They plugged the tequila by the brand name, but they had fun with Charlize and other people. And um, Guillermo is, is fantastic. And that idea initially, uh, a long time ago, I thought, you know, this is, the, the, this is a, a sidekick. There's racial overtones here. I don't think I like this. Over the years, it has proven to be absolutely fantastic. And the thing that they have at Guillermo do at the Emmy Awards, which is where he interviews the stars facing back to back, is also a gem. Just it, is, it really is. I mean, uh, I I thought they did some high wire stuff like that. Like that was a uh, that was chancy, yeah. and of course the John Cena thing that was mega high wire, absolutely. and it worked. Exactly. But doesn't John Cena a become the desire of every woman in the world and, uh, <laughs> and the nemesis of every man in the world, because I, I'm not a heavy workout person. You're uh, Mark fitter than I, but nobody could ever get that fit. Who could? But when, when he got the big laugh yeah. off the one after he gets to the whole thing, I mean the, the setup essentially, I guess. Right. And then he gets to the category and he just says the one word wardrobe or it was, uh, costumes, thank and, you. And, sorry. And what I suspect was in the written script on the prompter was costume with a period. Right. And he just paused and then into the new sentence. They're important, but uh, not to be too anatomical. Um, what my wife always talks about, because it does not exist with her husband, is look at the shoulders. Oh, go back uh, to the new. new Can new, you go back to the there? Look the, at shoulders. the shoulders. And then look at the waist. And they call that. Oh, I see. Drop which I, the, what do they, what do they call it, Sam? The drop. Mm -hmm. And the, so in other words, he's uh, 44, 46 inches across on the shoulders. He's, you know, 30 <laughs> inches across the waist. And it's that, uh, it's that drop, which again, uh, most men do not possess, but he, wow. he certainly does. And then TMC, of course, um, I know what they call it for a woman. I don't know what they call it for a man, but he was wearing flesh colored like a flesh colored jock strap. Oh, he was. Okay. Cause I, I was a little nervous, uh, yeah. kind of anxious that things could yeah. go south, you right. know? And then this was the finish. Yeah. yeah. Really good. Just really, really, really funny. Really good. Um, you know, the, there were some moments that, that were flat. I thought it, oddly it was, it, is it Melissa McCarthy? And uh, uh, Octavia Spencer, again, I, I, this idea, what brings you forward or what pulls you back? And I thought, that was a setback for them both, most especially for Melissa McCarthy. And I don't know if it was just badly thought out or badly executed. It wasn't good. 
Yeah, and you, you always wonder, yeah, did they, exactly, did they write that or did right. they decide, no, we're, this is what we're going to do? Yeah. Um, there were, were there other things, Sam, that, that struck you as, uh, uh, Ryan Gosling well, we, is very, well, Ryan well, Gosling uh, was a showstopper, I think, so I think great. Mindy's light, Mindy's correct, and we'll get to that in a second. But, you know, this Al Pacino sort of botching it at the end. Apparently, oh. Al Pacino was supposed to do that with Michelle Pfeiffer. And Michelle Pfeiffer, oh. Michelle Pfeiffer was a no-show. And Wow, that's uh, great, Pacino great knowledge. Pacino. I was not aware yeah, of that. And I was not aware of that either. So, you know, I don't know if they rehearsed it with two people, but, but she realized at some point she could not attend. And that would have been, you know, a Scarface reunion of sorts or whatever. Yeah. But anyway, he was... Uh, left on his own. And I, I, I bring this up for no reason at all. That, that movie, people talk about comfort movies. That movie heat is my favorite movie. I've seen it. I, I watch it constantly. And uh, you know, it's on Netflix now. It's Abe and De Niro. It's the greatest movie ever. I did a thing with Amy Brenderman not long ago. You know, she played De Niro's girlfriend in it. And I'm like, that is the greatest movie ever. She goes, you know, you're right. It is the greatest movie ever. Well, <laughs> just a relationship, cool. super cop, super, super robber. Uh, robber. Yeah. Um, the uh, I thought Kimmel got off a great line, though. I mean, I understand it was written, but still, I thought it was really a great bringing Pacino on, saying he could get he got a baby. We're lucky he got a babysitter tonight, and he could be here with us. You know, I mean, the idea somehow, you know, he just has this newborn, I guess, right? Yeah. With a uh, isn't that right, Sam? Yes, yeah, he does have a, new, a relative newborn, probably six months old at this point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah. Uh, well, you know, to to not to belabor this topic, and it's not quite the same age disparity. Uh, Paul Giamatti with a great award season and the most beautiful girlfriend you can imagine. This is a woman who played the mistress on Billions. Who, oh! Uh, the girlfriend in real life. And is she a beauty? Oh, my gosh. Uh, wow. Uh, and, uh, and, I, uh, yeah, it's a, night, it's a night of beautiful people. Right. I like that the line got out there from Kimmel. Was it Kimmel who did the line about 20 years to... Uh, oh, there she is, I guess. Yeah. Um, and that picture does not do her justice at all. Mm. Uh, about uh, De Niro's um, De Niro's he made girlfriend. It, he, made it De Niro, he made it De Niro line. Yeah. He, I, about I, him, I but the De Niro girlfriend being twenty years, uh, right? You know, whatever it was, it was, it was an age line. Forty years, sixty years. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Um, uh, anything? I'll tell you something that didn't work for me. Um, uh, right. There they are. Uh, thank you for I, that, Giamatti. Um, the and and it hasn't worked for me for the last few years. This is not in, uh, unique to this morning, year. Yeah, it's all it's awful. Why why can't you just run the GD uh, uh, pictures and a little bit of dialogue or moments from their films? How you can it, it was it was I'm going to use this word which probably overstates it in the world of over, overstatement, but I thought it was a travesty. It was it, it was a big swing and it was a big swing and a miss. I I, I think in the past, you know. Sarah McLaughlin singing that uh, Arms of an Angel, which has now been exploited in every charity ad. The right. first time that was done, it was very effective. And it hasn't been effective since. And this is uh, Buccelli and his son singing. Fantastic. All these names you cannot read. Confusing. And then all these dancers. The dancers got in the way. And the dancers, you know, which is not a diminishment of their talent. It was just, it was kind of everything in the kitchen sink. And then, of course, a, a few people pointed out names that were omitted. Uh, you know that that that's hard to do. But hey, this this angle here, I don't know who this guy is. Yes, exactly. Thank but, you. But I I also can't really make him out as clearly as I could because his name is blocked by these two dancers. Yeah, I mean it, it's it's dancers, it's Bocelli's, it's all about the performance in the hall. Hey, dude, we want to see who we lost this year. Yeah. There were some really high pro treat Williams was in, a, it was still pumping a major career. We don't even see him up there. You know what I mean? It was just, this is, I thought it was, they took what was already. What I ahead. think happens. And I was in the elevator late last night. Uh, it's Sam, your mic is like under the whatever, under the covers or something. We don't. Oh, did I? I oh, there you I go. Haven't... Now I hear it. Now I hear okay, it. Okay, sorry. Go ahead. Um, you said, I "Well, in... I think happens." You said, "I was in the hotel, the elevator with people from the orchestra, and they were like, how did it go? Were we seen?'" And I was like, "Yes, you were seen. The the orchestra was beautifully filmed. It was fantastic. In fact, I thought they incorporated the orchestra better than they have in years. And they reminded me several years ago they had the orchestra in the Columbia Records building, four blocks away, and they piped it." <laughs> 
<laughs> so, you know, they try different things. Um, but this in memoriam, and I assume it's just sort of a separate detached team. Hey, you guys, you take care of this. And so, so many things worked last night that this not working, I think, wasn't a huge thing. It was just unfortunate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it wasn't a huge thing, but it is. I used to really look forward to the in memoriam, and it always chokes me up. And to be honest, I mean, it chokes me up regardless of how they mangle it. It, it just, it, it's sad, you know. Yeah. But uh, that said, um, uh, oh, yeah, thank you, Alan, who really clearly watched a lot of it. Alan Rossi in our audience. Uh, ask Sam about the new award next year, Best Casting. Well, they, they, they referenced this new Again, song. grab your mic, Sam, and hold it closer to your whatever. You know what, I'm gonna do, what, I, you know what it is. You've I, rolled over onto it or no, something. This, yeah. this speaks well of me. I am so old-fashioned. This a MacBook, I think, is from like 2009. And I, I need to replenish it. I also need to plug it in. So let me Well, you look, fi you look fine, and everything was fine. It's just that they, that mic just gets caught a little bit. So go yeah, ahead. Let me uh, try to find that plug. But anyway, yeah. well, I, well, I, I just did in the dark. Okay. <laughs> Well, I so that. what about this new category, oh, best casting, oh, Sam? They had a funny bit between uh, Ryan Gosling and Emily Blunt talking about the new stunt category, which is coming. Right. So I thought it was good that they mentioned that there is going to be a casting category. And Jimmy made a joke about it that was actually, I think, a very effective joke where he said, essentially, now are you know not only the actors who bested you, but you were going to give an award <laughs> to the casting people who didn't pick you. Yeah, was really, so, that was that, really that, clever. That was good, too. Uh, yeah. I, look... That number that Gosling did, uh, that was incredible. And and, and not to be uh, to brag about my own gift of prophecy, uh, I do a lot of reports around the world, and I did a, a lot of reports for English and Australian and New Zealand television yesterday before. And I said, "Here's what's going to happen: A, you're going to see famous faces, you're going to see cameos, and you're going to see Slash on stage." And I, not that I divined that, but you know, obviously, you had to have Slash on stage. Uh, Sima Louis, um, Shang, 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 I can't say it, but the Marvel movie he was in. Sure. Uh, on the red carpet, literally lied to us. We said, You're in it, aren't you? I said, No. You know, he didn't want to give it away. And then another thing, and this is sometimes how little things can add up to big things. You know, they've tried using DJs and other people as the announcer. David Allen Greer, who is a wonderfully and highly respected comedian and I think Yale trained actor. David Allen Greer, well, you know, who knows more about announcing than you? David Allen Greer was the announcer, and I thought did a really good job. I agree. Um, and and I thought that was a, kind of a choice. You know, the phrase they use, and it, 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 oops, it's been applicable uh, in jobs that you've had, certainly. They call that the voice of God. And maybe yeah. because he kind of looks with that big gray beard like God, uh, or what we perceive God to be. Uh, but but he was a good addition last night, and he walked the carpet. He brought his daughter uh, and I thought, you know, this happens occasionally. We're always trying to play, impress our kids in show business. They're never impressed. His daughter was right there. Very. Who's ever doing your pictures, Mark? I that know. I'm quite impressed with whoever's doing the pictures. <laughs> Either uh, it's Kim or uh, or Tony, in the, okay. or if it's well, both, you're impressive. Anyway, congratulations. go ahead. Yeah. Congratulations to them both. Yeah. But anyway, <laughs> to to uh, Tim and Tony, the daughter was very impressed. I mean, her name was was it Lulu? Anyway, because she had a funny name, but but. Uh, like at last dad has taken me to something I want to go to. So uh, now a quick uh, note about winners. There sure. was a surprise. I thought uh, I didn't, but it, it kind of was when I saw that poor things won a couple early, yeah. I thought, yeah. Oh, maybe yeah. it's going to be a poor things upset. Go ahead on that. Me too. So basically for best actress uh, and all these other acting awards were predetermined and went exactly as people anticipated. But best actress was this split. Is it Lily Gladstone from Killers of the Flower Moon or Emma Stone from Poor Things? And an argument that my colleague Doug Culk had made is if you watched it, uh, Lily Gladstone is not on camera very much in Killers of the Flower Moon. And a majority of the time she's ailing or in a coma. Uh, Emma Stone is in a, you know, in poor things for almost every frame. And I think this happens sometimes where there's an assessment of what I'll call a degree of difficulty. And it, I guess from a standing start, it would look like Emma Stone's role was harder to play. Lily has been great on the award circuit. She's won many, many precursors. So folks who really know this stuff said she's going to be the winner. And then when Emma won, 
you could tell she was just shocked, stunned. And then I had a conversation with her backstage that um, AP, no less, picked up and distributed without credit. Thank you very much. Um, wow. What? Where, where <laughs> I go find you guys, you, your, your snooper staff will be, it's a, AP's Twitter feed, um, right. where I basically said, you know, I've done this for a while and I've never seen anybody as shocked as you. And she was like, yes, I think I blacked out. I couldn't, I, you know, and this was 20 minutes afterwards. She couldn't believe it still. Wow. So um, uh, sometimes you, when they do that thing, like, oh, my God, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to right. say. It gets to be almost a little obnoxious, like, OK, pull it together, say something or. Right. But, but, but in this in this case, she was legitimately overwhelmed and swept under by. And, 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 but she was sincere. And she mentioned uh, she said the director, who she obviously is very close with, having made several movies with him now. The director said, you know what? Take yourself out of it. It's not, you know, in essence, it's not about you. It's about the totality of all our efforts. So I thought her speech was actually very good. I agree. When she got they, to it, I thought it was excellent. They've run uh, a really good campaign. Uh, I thought that um, uh, the Oppenheimer crew also was really great with his you know, wife. You know what's funny? I, and yeah. I, I wonder how many times we see this backstage, and it's not a vanity thing. They're just deeply self-satisfied. They're like, mm. yes, as it should be. And uh, and I think with good reason. Um, and the thing that they were they were uh, surprised by, and Steven Spielberg, by the way, uh, very receptive. You know, and they were he was told in advance about a joke about him and how yeah. his effect, you know he had aged uh, since the Fablements, and he played right along. Played right yes. along. Really I thought the whole room played along on those yeah. kinds of moments. Exactly right. Yes, yes, yes. Although this is minor and has been dwarfed out. Um, Jimmy uh, made an Emma Stone joke early on, and you could see her mouthing. <laughs> Um, uh, unkind description about Jimmy Kimmel, but that did not get the traction that uh, the Taylor Swift uh, dismissal of Joe Co Joe Coy got, which uh, you know. In, in any event, back no, to no, 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 no. I, I, I love these kind of X rays of moments like that, and, and I also think that the um, the comment he made about Germany, I believe, also I felt like that was sort of a little bit uh, problematic early. Remember, it well, was no, a rom com. It, it was it was funny. This uh, Sandra Hewler, who's in who best picture nominee? She's so brilliant. Is from Leipzig, and I learned, you know, because I, I think there are many different elements surrounding this. But one element, which is very important, and Divine Joy Randolph is a benefit beneficiary of this. Coleman Domingo is a beneficiary of this. Hey, I want to get an Oscar nomination, and I want it to, among other things, help my career, and I wanted to raise my quote. And both Divine and Coleman have booked three movies, big movies, during award season. Wow! And, uh, and wow! So, you know, so good, and good. so Sand Sandra Hewler, I have to think, and she was in two films, yeah. Anatomy of the Fall. So the I fall. said, I basically yeah. said, you know, be it Leipzig or Hollywood, is the phone ring? And, <laughs> and she was like, it is ringing. Uh, it is ringing. She was, she was brilliant. Yeah. Um, I, I look, I thought Jimmy was amazing. I just think he is so talented. He makes it look so easy. And that last thing, as you say, I thought it was a bit also until I realized, oh my God, that is a Trump tweet that he's reading. Yeah. And then the last thing I'll say is that that cutaway of Jodie Foster also helped sell it. You know what I mean? Like yeah. when it, it was she like, wow, it. she's laughing. Right. You need to see that reaction sell everything. Right. And exactly. You're exactly right. You're exactly right. And, I, I, you know, there, we had a fashion guy on today, you know, blah, blah, blah. And this is a phrase I, I, I use, Jodie Foster amongst them. It's the base canvas. Her eyes are so piercing. She's so really gorgeous. I couldn't even tell you what she was wearing. It doesn't matter. You know, and then when they talk about these looks, and that'll be, I think, a discussion that goes on for a long time. Charlize, Zendaya. Oh, my God. I just, yeah. I just want to, I, here's what I want to spend my <laughs> life doing. I want to spend my life getting paid to go to events and looking at attractive women. <laughs> well, there you have it. Uh, yeah. Your red carpet show is great too, and I know you start super early, but I really yeah. enjoyed it. Um, Sam, you're great to spend time with us. You know I adore you, and I look forward to the next time. Thanks, All right, Mark. Thanks so much. Thank you, guys. Okay, and you Sam Rubin. I'll, I'll, yes. A rare thing. I'll do the. Yeah, uh, please plug anything. It's uh, my socials are at Sam on TV, so we have some really good footage uh, on Twitter and Instagram uh, from last night. Uh, so at Sam on TV, you can check out, you know, these great carpet moments and some other things. I look forward to it at Sam on TV. Uh, can we share some of them here on the show? Sure. Go you, the, your little squad, which is so good. Uh, you, no. you literally say Jodie Foster, the picture appears. 
There it yeah, is. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, uh, but we'll get Sam on TV, but I also will share some of the, I just, we never, you know, with the Oscars particularly, you never know right. copyright wise what we're allowed to do. But, oh, uh, we don't care. There's okay. the, uh, watch this. Okay, so we're talking for a while. And Jessica Holmes here in the blue, who I love as much as anyone I've ever, ever worked with. She's great. She will grab his arm at some point, his bicep, and will not let it go. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's okay. sometimes you got to grab what you want. Yeah. Uh, all right, guys. Uh, thank I, I promise Sam I let him out by uh, yeah. so I'm 15 seconds before 12:30, so That's I'll let right. you go. Uh, thanks, Sammy. Appreciate all right. it. All right, let's do that. Sam Rubin. Bye, bye, Sam. The Mark Thompson Show. He's great. Really cool. To I mean, after the kind of you know marathon that he's been running to cover the Oscars to be with us, it was really, really cool. I know people are like, oh, I guess he Kim. Bed? I'm seeing this. Kim has been. Kim, Kim, meantime, while all the the um, the good warm chatter has been going on, have you been banning people from the... No, uh, I didn't ban anybody. Oh. It says How here, rude. Kim banning people left and right. I didn't do it. No. I was putting your comments on the screen and oh. explaining why Sam Rubin was in bed. Oh, I see. <laughs> because he worked all, right. all day yesterday and he was the morning show host. So what, they have to get up at what, four in the morning or something to be there? Three yeah. in the morning to be there. Yeah, by he's four? like he's working a Tony schedule. Yeah, for, uh, like someone Tony. else is up at four o'clock, so three o'clock like, yeah. this morning. <laughs> Thank you for calling us from bed because we'll take it. Yeah, uh, that was so cool of him. Yeah, imagine that after it would be like running a double marathon or something. Yeah, Mark, I pledged a hundred dollars if you deliver entertainment icon Sammy Rubin, and you delivered icon Sammy Rubin, my friend. Here you go, Louis. Oh, look at that. Big shout out. Big shout out. That is uh, when we get $100, uh, it's a major announcement. A major announcement yeah. from the Mark Thompson Show. Wow. A major announcement. Uh, Luis, I will tell you that you could have gotten away with not giving us the $100 because <laughs> I have forgotten that you had promised the $100. But I uh, very much appreciate that you stayed true to your word. And... Uh, you toss us the 20, and I'm not... I'm not going to cry! I'm not going to cry! I'm not going to cry, but on a... I'm not going to cry! I'm not going to cry! Thank you so much. Really cool of you, Louise. Thank you so much. Uh, Robert H., love the show. Keep up the good work. Buckshot. <laughs> <From a tenth. laughs> Big shout out. <laughs> Big sh what does the buckshot refer to, Tony? I don't know. I no, I thought Tony would know that. Me. Thanks, Tony. Uh... Anyway, that was very cool. And Wes, thank you for the five spot, Wes. Big shout out. Big shout out. We are crowdfunded, so it's really great to uh, to hear from you and to get uh, contributions from you. Sadly, we have to, we're kind of on a PBS model. You know, we came here from the radio. We're trying to put together enough money to cover expenses and pay people who are involved in the show. And as a result, we need to ask for your support. So our community of supporters is Patreon and PayPal. That's a really good way to reach us. Uh, maybe you can put it up on the screen, the um, the MarkThompsonShow.com. You have to put in the MarkThompsonShow.com. If you just put in Mark Thompson Show, it goes to a ventriloquist website. So you have to go the MarkThompsonShow.com. There is no ventriloquism on our site, but you can click Patreon or PayPal. The truth is that the Patreon and PayPal links are right under this video and most all our videos, so you don't even need to go to the site. That was another thing. I got the email saying that Sometimes when you go to the site, if it's the wrong ISP, like so, like even in my area, I have a cable provider who is essentially blocking our site. Our site is perfectly safe. I don't know what the issue is, mm -hmm. but uh, sometimes it's hard to reach. So if you don't want to go to the site, the MarkThompsonShow.com, just go to Patreon or PayPal. The links are right under any video, most any video that you'll see on our on our um, on our channel. All right. So now uh, I must ask you, uh, Kim, if you yes. can tell me um, the Mark Thompson show. If you look at all the uh, the winners of the Oscars last time, I, 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 there are a couple of Oscar movies I really want to uh, get to. What's See, that, Tony? Oh, I just I need to plug Godzilla one. So yes, yeah, that's yeah, right, Godzilla. <laughs> Great night for Godzilla. Very very their, cool. Uh, Congratulations. And do you see the shoes they wore? Oh, is they that had, they had Godzilla claws 
in the heels. Oh, that is oh, wow. very, very cool. Mm. Wow. Okay. Ooh, That's all I have. It's a wild idea, but it just might work. It did work, as it turns out. It did work. Wow. There is a... Um, I saw a... From Miami Coffee. Hello, Mark. Great show. I'm listening from Miami. Oh, which wow. Which is very cool. Shout out to... In my new mode here, Tony, I can't really... We love ourselves from Florida on the Mark Thompson show. So. Yeah, we need to fix stuff. Yeah, I'll um, come up with ideas today. There's that. Um, but uh, Godzilla. Yeah, that's pretty great. Uh, Al Pacino blew it. Well, you can say that. All those great movies and no... Uh, Unless he didn't. Unless he was like, hey, in the interest of saving time, no, everyone I mean, knows the nominee. We're just going to cut to the chase. Well, I think that was the whole. Per that's why they did all the cut ins early on with like the video producer so they could just get out and just say the winner. I think that's what I've heard earlier. That's what was the plan. Uh, I guess. I've heard that as a rationalization for <laughs> what happened. Yeah, I have heard that. Thanks, but I, they will, messed it up. I mean, I thought Sammy just gave you the very best explanation, which was full of information that we didn't have. Yeah. Uh, one, if, if you miss it, I'll just review it in 30 seconds or less. Uh, Michelle Pfeiffer didn't make it to the awards. Yeah. It was to have been an award presented by Al Pacino and Michelle Pfeiffer. So I, maybe in the scramble, it was a little lost on Pacino. He clearly didn't really have his act together. He was not reading the prompter. He was not really sure what his next move was. I mean, to be <laughs> fair, I got to say, dude, if you've watched the Oscars at all, in your life you kind of know the dance i don't think you need to be have it explained to you the nominees are you read them and then you say the oscar goes to it's kind of straightforward and the other thing i would say tony just to generally refute the idea that you, know, you just come on and you say the name and get off the lead up to that moment that is the moment it is the zenith of the oscars that moment where it's announced the lead up to that is what establishes the drama in that moment and the nominees are boom 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 that gets you to the crescendo you can't just have the crescendo you've got to have that lead up it doesn't take time oh, it I takes agree. 20 seconds so you read the damn names and then you open the envelope but oh. he was he was out of it i thought uh, didn't it seem like he he seemed like he was, you know, into into where the, are my weed smokers at? <laughs> I don't know if it was weed or if it was alcohol, but it was definitely something. I'd be willing to bet my right. lunch that there's alcohol. Okay, involved. then it was alcohol. So, um, um, oh, he has baby brain. Lori always willing to give somebody a credit. Uh, come on, he has baby brain with an infinite home. Baby brain plus old age. <laughs> Yikes, she says. Um, anyway, it was. Uh, I enjoyed the show, and I so enjoyed Sam sharing some some thoughts and some insights and some inside stories as well. Now, Kim's news. Then I will give you some medical news, and it's important medical news. I've got some news about the Alzheimer's drug. I've got some news about vaccines. I've got some kind of. We're gonna. We kind of just covered the Oscars. We're gonna pivot back to stuff that I think really is like news you can use a little bit and uh, we'll finish strong stick the landing and uh, go back to the dugout that's the plan <laughs> smash the like button like a boss Mark Thompson show the Mark Thompson show On the Mark Thompson Show, I'm Kim McAllister, and this report is sponsored by Tenuta Vineyards in Livermore. Uh, let's start, though, with President Biden, who is not apologizing, we understand, uh, for using the term illegal to describe the immigration status of the man suspected in the attack and killing of a Georgia nursing student. President Biden told MSNBC he regrets he used the word illegal and should have called him undocumented. After he made the remark during his State of the Union speech, President Biden took heat from top Democrats for using that term. It's interesting. Uh, we had a policy, a former policy at KGO, where we wouldn't say 
illegal immigrant, we'd say undocumented immigrant. And right. the, news, the news director's thought was people aren't illegal. It's not illegal to be a person, right? It's you're un, you're here in an undocumented way, which is against the law, but you're not illegal as a person. So I, 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 that's a, that's a, mm -hmm. I mean, I understand the conclusion, but that's a tortured explanation as to why. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, because you're suggesting that it's just where the word illegal uh, is used in relation to a uh, person. You're saying, mm -hmm. uh, in, in, in other words, if you use it, it, it almost isn't worth talking about, but yeah. it, that's the, that's a tortured explanation, but I get they didn't want illegal. Okay. They didn't want it. So we didn't use it. And, uh, and it's not, kosher, I guess, to use that word anymore. So when President Biden used it off the cuff at the State of the Union, he's called out for it. Mm. Meanwhile, speaking of camp, illegal, speaking of, <laughs> speaking of breaking laws, uh, former President Trump is trying don't to talk to me that way. <laughs> All right, well, I'm just saying, dude. Former, right. former President Trump is trying to delay the start of his upcoming Stormy Daniels hush money trial in New mm. York. Lawyers for Trump filed a new motion today asking that the start be postponed until after the Supreme Court rules on Trump's claim of presidential immunity. The high court is not scheduled to hear that case until April 25th. Okay. <laughs> wow. That was very inappropriate. And well, it is the only trial, I'll remind you, that appears to be going on unabated there doesn't appear to be a way to slow it down. Everything else, he's been able to throw roadblocks up. Mm. But this one, he hasn't. And the one other thing I'll say is that I want to see that documentary. Stormy Daniels is the subject of a new documentary. Now, mm -hmm. I'm sure it'll be slanted one way or the other, but uh, this is a simple thing, man. It's what he does all the time. He rolled around with this woman who was a porn person and paid her off to stay quiet. I mean, what again, really, uh, how twisted into pretzel logic are we going to get to somehow you know, try to figure out some kind of other explanation but anyway i'm looking forward to seeing that documentary ah he of the gold bars new jersey senator bob menendez pleading not guilty to new criminal charges he was arraigned in a new york federal court today on superseding indictments charging him with obstruction of justice he was all uh, indicted on 12 new criminal charges this democrat including conspiracy to commit bribery fraud extortion and conspiracy for a public official to act as a wow agent. that's a lot of conspiracy joe box and little anthony yeah, that's right joe box and little anthony were not mentioned a lot of conspiracy going on over there. I don't know. Mm. Meanwhile, two Bay Area men found guilty of killing a police officer in Rome are now back on trial. The court is trying to figure out if the, these young men knew enough Italian to understand what was actually happening five years ago. So Italy's highest court, uh, they call it the Cassation Court, ordered a new trial last year saying it hadn't been proven beyond a reasonable doubt that the defendants actually understood they were dealing with Italian police officers when they meant to uh, went, went to meet an uh, alleged drug dealer. Federal agents are seizing computers and documents at a women's prison in Dublin. It is an apparent escalation of a years-long abuse investigation at FCI Dublin, which led to previous charges against a former warden and others. A year and a half ago, several employees pleaded guilty to charges of groping and abusing female inmates. KTVU is reporting that a dozen more lawsuits were just filed last week. A U.S. district court is reportedly considering assigning a special master to oversee this prison going forward. San Francisco-based Airbnb getting rid of something that is kind of creepy. They're banning the use of indoor security cameras for all listings. Now, it used to be that the policy was it was okay if it was a common area for the homeowner or whoever was managing the home to peek in on you if you're renting their Airbnb. Wow. Like hallways, living rooms, as long as they tell you on the listing page that there's a camp that the place is monitored with a camera, they can't get you in the bedroom or bathroom, but they could get you in other, see you in other areas, common areas. Well, now Airbnb says we're done with that. Uh, they say they're simplifying their policy on security cameras and other devices to continue to prioritize privacy of the community. So they are banning the use of indoor security cameras for all of their listings, which seems better, doesn't it? Because I mean, I don't know if you, if you, if you want to I, if I'm renting an Airbnb, I don't want people looking at me. No, well, I, I completely agree. I don't yeah. care whether you told me or not. I mean, that would be enough to yeah. keep me from... It's not like there's anything going on, but I just don't yeah. like to be voyeuristically 
or otherwise monitored. No. No, you wouldn't expect it in a hotel room. So why should you expect it in an Airbnb? Absolutely Exactly. Not. Thank you. I love it when you're angry. Mm. Well, <laughs> it would make me a little bit annoyed. Britain's Princess Kate is apologizing for any confusion over a Mother's Day family photo that she edited. Oh. That, according to a statement from Kensington Palace, the image was the first official photo of Kate since she had an unspecified abdominal surgery in January. Multiple news agencies had to yank that photo over its apparent uh, manipulation. And Kate says, yeah, I did it. I'm sorry. It My was bad. wrong, it was stupid, and I'm trying to be a better person. Yeah, I mean, she yeah. did she apologize to the Asian community over and that? And I wanted to apologize yeah. to the Asian community, the Asian American community. Yeah, I think that's worth an apology. Yeah, yeah. My bad, I'm sorry, picture's okay, I'm okay. That's what she said. But that was a big dust-up, though. Even It even yeah. got to me, and I don't follow that stuff. Yeah, I mean, well, because all these agencies, I guess you have to indicate whether something has been edited like that. And yeah. they all put it out like it was nothing and then realized, oh, it's been changed. So they had to pull it down. You would expect cameras in a hotel hallway, says PT. Back to the Airbnb. Sure. Yeah, in a hotel hallway, I would. <laughs> but not, in, not in an Airbnb hallway. Where you can yeah, not in the and, home. I, I get it. I walking agree. Down in, a, in your pajamas or something. Right, in a public space. It's a different thing. Or in a thing. towel, whatever. <laughs> Thank you. Come on. I mean, in a hotel hallway, that's a public common area where everyone's walking. That's Thank different. you. Kim is exactly right there. Yeah. Kim, how are you? Right. This report is sponsored by Tenuta Vineyards in Livermore. You know, you don't have to drive out to the winery if it's far for you. You can go to the website and get your Mark Thompson, why are you yelling red, delivered right to your porch. That's right. If you call the folks at Tenuta Vineyards, then you can say smash it with your iron rod and mm. you can get your 10% off. 925-699-4576. So it's the phrase of, that pays. Smash it with those, your iron rod. Smash it yeah. with your iron rod. For those of you who don't like smash it with your iron rod, I would say in this <laughs> case, it behooves you to love it and use yeah. it. Behooves yeah. is a ding or ding it, cleanly in the ding, ding it, category. Ding it. I will take the ding it. Um, mm -hmm. They've got a lot of varietals to choose from. 28, 14 reds, 14 whites. So much good wine for you to choose from and have delivered to your home. Easy wow. peasy, pumpkin squeezy. So check out uh, tenutavineyard.com and use your wire. You uh, smash it with your iron rod and get your wire. You yelling red and be a happy camper. That's right. Well, you really, uh, you really convinced me. I'm into it. Yeah. Did I stick the landing? Uh, I want to be honest with you. I didn't. Uh, I, th I think you like landed with like one wheel and then the other wheel touched down. Really? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It was a little I, I, I mean, I wasn't going to say anything, mm -hmm. but you actually asked. Oh. So okay. I like I'm, and you know I don't lie. Yeah. So, uh, right. I uh, what? Uh, I'll do better <laughs> next time. Yeah. I um. I thought, don't get me wrong, did I do, was it okay? or did, was yeah. it, it was fine. It was good. Yeah. It was better than a lot of other stuff that's on the show. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you for the air check. I'm Kim uh, McAllister, what? and this is oh. the Mark Thompson Show. Who is having that uh, conversation? Look, all I'm saying is she asked, and I really had no choice. You know what? But, all right. Uh, they had to close down an entire radio station to silence him. And now, he's here. Ladies and gentlemen, Mark Thompson. The Mark Thompson Show. This is Mark Thompson. Joe Box and Little Anthony. Mo Black's brother, Fat Andy. There's a reason that this place is fun. I'm not gonna cry! I'm not gonna cry! Y'all can all go to hell and I'm going back to Texas. My bad. I'm sorry. And I wanted to apologize to the Asian community, the Asian American community. We've never seen anything like it before. Have you ever seen anything like it before? 
Have you ever seen anything like this? There is nothing in our history that quite compares to this. Nobody has ever put something like this together that I've ever seen. There's never been anything like this. Why are you yelling? Good day, sir! Seriously, what the... All right, everybody, we are back. It is our Monday show. We covered some Oscars. We covered uh, an informant for the mob. That was interesting. And that was a tr- our true crime conversation, which we have on Mondays. I have some news that I think will be of interest about Alzheimer's and about uh, medications getting the green light from the FDA. Before I get to that, I want to one more time mention that Wednesday is the start of Mark's Madness. Albert, the commissioner of Mark's Madness, is in Taiwan, but he is calling in from Taiwan on Wednesday to kick off Mark's Madness. Albert, thank you. What I'd like you to do, if you have any interest, Mark's Madness, we pitch our drops off uh, against each other. You can find all the information on one video, which is on our channel under videos. Look for Mark's Madness 2024. We did it last year, too, so get the right one. Mark's Madness 2024. Albert walks you through step by step how you can look at all the drops that are in the contest. You can sign up and actually fill out a bracket. It's really easy. There is our channel. We're seeing it You now. Tony has put it up and you can see the Mark Thompson show. You go down under videos and there is that video. Mark's Madness 2024. They'll hit you with an ad probably because that's the way YouTube works. And then you'll be able to watch it uninterrupted. And it takes you through all the steps to join the league and then pick your favorites. You can see I'm there with Albert and we play each and every drop. So you'll be able to hear everything that's going to be coming down in Mark's Madness. We worked really hard on that video and it really is a how-to and it takes you through every single step. Mark's Madness, again, there are the brackets. You just pick which drop you think will beat the other and move on to the next round, et cetera. Kim and I will both participate. Maybe Mm -hmm. Tony will fill out a a bracket as well. Uh, Albert will definitely have one, and Tony will will too. And uh, I haven't filled mine out yet. I'm, uh, I'm waiting, but I'm looking forward Wednesday, and you will have all the way up until we start to fill out the bracket. So, um, so good luck. The Mark Thompson Show. There was a lot of discussion around this Alzheimer's drug out of Eli Lilly. The research seems sketchy to us. We talked about it on the show. I was just simply reading various reports on the research. And still it got a green light. And it looked as though the FDA was going to allow that to be widely available. But now, the FDA saying no. Here is the statement from Eli Lilly. This is the Donamab, is what it's called. Or don't, don't you know, again, these are medicines. They have different pronunciations. I'm not really sure. But... The FDA has informed Eli Lilly it wants to further understand topics related to evaluating the safety and efficacy of Donamab, including the safety results in Donamab-treated patients and the efficacy implications of the unique trial design. That's a very legal, neutral way of saying they're going to look at this stuff again. The very reports that we talked about on this show, I suspect, and probably some that we didn't have access to, And they note that it is a decision that will surprise many Alzheimer's experts, doctors, and patients who expected the medication would soon be on the market. The FDA's move was starting um, to be widely anticipated. Uh, They were planning for a green light to this drug during the first quarter of this year. They didn't say anything publicly about this move. This is very sudden, apparently. And... They're not saying they're not going to release it. They're saying that they need a neutral panel to be convened, which is kind of what I thought the FDA was, but all right. Uh, They want to convene an advisory committee, and they want to reevaluate, if you will, the information and the lab results associated with this Alzheimer's medication. 
the treatments for Alzheimer's, which affects more than 6 million Americans and has no cure and no medication that can restore memory loss or reverse cognitive decline, the development of any treatment has been an elusive thing, which is why if you've been affected in any way by Alzheimer's, you frankly run to any hope at all. Even if the results are questionable, you run to them. There are many failed uh, drug t trials in this world of Alzheimer's treatments, but Donamab was an infusion given once a month. It belongs to a new class of drugs that experts hope might help patients by attacking this protein, this amyloid protein that builds up into plaques in the brains of people with Alzheimer's. Was this the same one that had severe side effects? Uh, I, well, uh, I, let me say this. Um, okay. I think there are side effects on both these medicines, both mm -hmm. this and this um, Lakembi, which was the other one that okay. was part of the approved drug in this class that's made by a different uh, pharmaceutical company. Right. And that was given every two weeks, that Lakembi. And that, they said, could modestly slow cognitive decline. Mm -hmm. And the reason that became an issue as well is because the way they evaluated cognitive decline became extremely subjective. In other words, a lot of this stuff, you can look at blood tests and you can look at objective results as to how the patient is being helped. But in the case of cognitive decline, there's an interpretive aspect to it, mm -hmm. right? Um, it's not as simple as taking a simple cognitive test. And even in the results that they made public, you thought, mm, seems to me like there's kind of a judgment call as to whether or not this thing is working. Right. So. Um, look, there are drugs out there, but this data showed that the drug could modestly slow cognitive decline in people with mild symptoms, and the risks were similar to those of Lakembi, and those were, I think, side effects that were associated with um, blood issues, as I recall. Uh, let me see if there's anything about the side effects uh, here. Um, but they obviously want to look at the side effects because that's even mentioned in the delay of the report. So they're going to have a, um, a look at the safety risks. They say they are safety risks sim similar to those of other drugs. Okay. Um, it's sad because so many people are struggling with Alzheimer's right now. And yet, I think, don't you want to have drugs on the market that have gone through some kind of safety regimen to mm -hmm. at least to figure out you know, whether they're safe. I also wanted to mention that the ALS drug, Relevrio, uh, I think it's called, it failed a clinical trial and oh. now may be withdrawn from the market. Tony's got a picture mm. of it up there now. Uh, Amelix is the drug manufacturer. They're going to announce their plans for the drug within the next two months, but it's one of the few treatments that the FDA has approved for ALS and it's failed a large clinical trial, and it will likely be withdrawn from the market. It was approved less than two years ago, but there were always questions as to how effective that was. But again, so desperate are we for something that the medication was greenlit, and now it looks as though Instead of waiting for two years for the results of a large clinical trial, they greenlit it, and now mm -hmm. the data is showing that there could be some issues. So they are likely pulling that. And then lastly, more parents are delaying their kids getting vaccines, and pediatricians are worried. Measles cases are coming up. There are huge pockets of measles, of measles in Florida and in California, and in a lot of places in between. And pediatricians across California are saying they've seen a sharp increase recently in the number of parents who have concerns about routine childhood vaccinations. 
they're demanding their own inoculation schedules. They don't like the inoculation mm-hmm. schedules that are specified by the state, for example, and by med- medical institutions for their babies. So pediatricians are saying they're worried about this. You're getting this from a pediatrician and author who's written on vaccinations for the American Ac- uh, Academy of Pediatrics, especially early on when a parent is already feeling really vulnerable and doesn't want to give something to their beautiful baby who was just born if they don't need it. It makes them think, maybe I'll just delay it and wait and see. Mm-hmm. What they don't realize, they go on, is that if they don't vaccinate according to the recommended schedule, that can really set their child up for a whole lot of risks. This is, again, according to the a vaccine expert at the American Academy of Pediatrics. It's, again, not clear how widespread this is, but... There was always, in the last, I will say, 15 years, questions around the MMR va- uh, vaccination schedule and then the MMR vaccine itself. Don't you, um, when they, when you, you get a new animal, a new kitty cat or dog or whatever it is, the vet says, listen, we don't, we can't vaccinate until a certain age, right? A certain number of weeks in. So until we vaccinate, don't take your pet anywhere, anywhere. So does this mean that people that are delaying the vaccine schedule for their human children aren't going to take them anywhere? They also aren't going to go to the store and bring possibly something home to their child? You're just going to pretend like we're back in the pandemic and not do anything, not go anywhere until you're ready to give the vaccine? No, that's not what it means. That means you're putting your kid at risk every time you step outside the door. Again, this is an increasing momentum that has grown around the anti-vax movement. And reactions to vaccines are a real thing. So you can't, with one sweep, say, oh, that's ridiculous, Uh, you know, vaccines are safe, and everything you put in your body carries with it a risk. And you have to be okay with that risk. Sadly, as a parent, you're faced with kind of what you're suggesting, which is take the risk, which it's overwhelmingly safe, but not completely safe, mm-hmm. versus it's a crapshoot. Now your immune system doesn't have exposure to these various things that are associated with like the MMR vaccine, et cetera, and you have to now take that roulette wheel spin with your child that way, as you say, you know, what's coming back into the house, et cetera. So look, it's, it's been the way we've done things for years. I think it's allowed people to escape some of the worst epidemics in our nation's history and in the world's history. I mean, polio is a brutal crippling illness, killed people or crippled them for life. Smallpox, uh, I, I, you know, all of these things we talk about uh, that you're getting vaccinated for. These are brutal, but I'm just saying these were game changers when the vaccinations came in. But look at this. West Virginia's GOP-controlled state legislature voting this weekend. This just happened the day before yesterday to allow some students who don't attend traditional public schools to be exempt from state vaccination. The requirements, when I say state vaccination, in other words, the state requires you to get your kid vaccinated on a certain schedule if they're going to attend a state school. If you're going to attend a public school, you got to have vaccinated, right? Everybody understands that. By the time your child enters kindergarten, they have to have all the vaccines, certain number of vaccines. By the time they're in another grade, they have to have, so they're on the schedule, right? Yeah. Thank you. And this is one of the strictest states is West Virginia about just that. But now this bill just got approval. Despite the objection of the Republican Senate Health and Human Resources Chair Mike Maroney, a trained doctor, he called the bill, quote, an embarrassment, said he believed lawmakers are harming the state. He says, quote, I took an oath to do no harm. There's zero chance I can vote for this bill. It's a bad bill for West Virginia. It's a step backward. There's no question, no question there will be negative effects, he says. This is, again, he's a doctor and a legislator. It's an embarrassment for me to be part of it. It should be an embarrassment to everybody. West Virginia was some of the lowest life expectancy rates. You know, a quarter of the children there live in poverty. It's one of only two states, along with California, 
that don't permit non-medical exemptions to vaccinations as a condition for school entry. We won't let you do that here. But now what's happening is you're going to be allowed to seek exemptions from state-mandated vaccinations. It's a new proposed vaccine law in West Virginia. Now heads to the governor's desk for signing Jim Justice. So times they are changing. But that's the latest on vaccines and uh, medicines of the moment. The Mark Thompson Show. Yeah. I've only got another 45 minutes to an hour of material. What time is it, Tony? It's 1 o'clock. It's one oh five. <laughs> oh, no. Party time to... Uh, Thanks, Tony. Time for me to run? Mm-hmm. Wow. This is really a tough one for me. I want to thank you for everybody... Thanks to everybody who supported us today, mm-hmm. joined us. We had some really great, great stuff. How about this? B.O. Ten bucks. How about big shout out? A big shout out. Got picks in and ready for Mark's Madness. Yeah, baby. <laughs> Though I know I won't win, not my fault. 30 to 35% of folks are idiots. We'll mess up my bracket. I, uh, There's always been in this country yeah. 30 to 35% idiots. Yes, I know. They And they do this to me all the time, he says. Uh, you know, they do this to me all the time. I don't know what the hell they do it There for. are a lot of very tough drops this year. I like this one. This is a word from the Lord, and he's not happy. I hope that wins, but I don't think it's going to. I think it may. Uh, but big shout out. Big shout out. Uh, appreciate everybody's... Um, contributions to the show. I can't believe we have to wrap up, Tony. What happens if I just keep going? I have a law and disorder I never got to, Tony. Oh, no. I've told you before, this is YouTube. There are no rules. So There are no rules, but there I always no hate rules. to... I know a lot of Kim's people gonna, like to go over... Kim's going to leave to her yeah, show. People like to go over to that uh, live... Uh, what is it called? The After, after party. party Live. She's already left the, for the, the After Party Live. Yeah. yeah, The After Party Live. We'll do it live! No. I can go write it and we'll do it the live! The After Party Live's going down right now. But tomorrow, I've got a great Law and Disorder. Can I just give you one morsel from Law and Disorder? Peter Navarro, once the economic advisor to President Trump, ordered a report to a Miami prison to begin serving a four-month sentence for refusing to comply with the congressional investigation into the J-6 attack on the Capitol. 74 years old, headed to a Florida prison. Although Florida prisons are nice this time of year, so maybe not so bad. Stevens for the Mark Johnson Show. Bye bye. Yeah, he um, he has two counts of contempt of Congress. Bye bye. All right, more tomorrow with David K. Johnston. Until then, bye bye.